today on Personal Injury Court. You're kind of haunted by this every waking moment. Yes, Your Honor. My daughter was standing up observing me. Uh, Mr. Ward comes uh, barreling down. Uh, break, 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 break. I didn't run over anybody, OK? I just uh, nicked her, and, uh, and she uh, fell. He initially hit me on my left leg, which shattered my kneecap, tore my ACL. You're asking this court for $550,000. I have a pre-existing condition. Spondylolisthesis. Is that even a thing? One thing that we don't do in this courtroom is to belittle someone else's reality. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Gino Brogdon spent 10 years on the bench ruling on cases worth billions of dollars. Now he presides over some of the largest claims in TV history. This is Personal Injury Court. Good day, everyone. This is the matter of Donahue versus Ward. From the documents you filed with this court, Ms. Donahue, you are here with your father, but you're suing Mr. Ward for injuries that you received in a golf cart accident. You're asking this court to award you $25,000 for past medicals, $30,000 for future medicals, $500,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $555,000. Is that correct? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Honor. And Mr. Ward, you believe you were not wrong. You didn't do anything wrong here. You did your best, and she's responsible for her own injuries. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Well, let's get into the legal sauce. Now, father and daughter golfing, how does that happen? Well, um, Your Honor, my, I've been a golfer all my life. I, I really enjoy the game. It's one of my favorite pastimes. All growing up, I tried to get Lindsay to come with me on the, on the golf course, but it just wasn't, uh, just wasn't uh, what she wanted to do on her uh, Saturdays or, or Fridays. So um, I was really shocked and surprised when she came to me recently and said, Daddy, I'd like to have you teach me how to play golf. I mean, this was a thrill. So I planned uh, the whole day. We got uh, some tea times down. We had breakfast. We were planning a lunch. And this was a really special day for, for Lindsay and I. So what did it mean to you, Miss Lindsay? Well, I just recently graduated college, Your Honor, and I got a wonderful opportunity to work with this insurance company. And I know many of the offers and deals are made on the golf course, and I didn't want to be left out because I didn't know how to play, or heaven forbid, because I'm a woman. So I thought, why not have one of the best teachers, my dad, teach me how to play golf? So I took up that opportunity. That is beautiful, and I should have had girls, I'm telling you. <laughs> Mr. Ward, you're also a golfer? Yes. How uh, long have you been golfing? Oh, it's, uh, it's been at least 25, 30 years. Uh, I own my own sanitation company. I'm kind of a self-made man, and I, I like to play golf. I try to go a couple times a week, maybe three. I like to make deals on the golf course. Three times a week, huh? Yeah. Well, yes. three is a special number for me, because that's how many times I've been golfing in my whole life. <laughs> so how did this happen? Well, Your Honor, we were on the 11th hole, and I've never, ever played before. So I was trying to get every aspect, every angle that I could. Yes, ma'am. And as that was happening, as I was watching my dad, the next thing I know, Mr. Ward comes over the hill with his weighted down golf cart, smacks me in my left leg, and breaks my kneecap, and it tosses me into the sand pit where I tear my ACL and slip three discs. So Mr. Ward ran you over with his golf cart and knocked you into the sand trap. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I didn't run over anybody, okay? And, uh, and I was concerned when I found out what happened. I, um, I just uh, nicked her and, uh, and she uh. fell. I mean, uh, bottom line is it wasn't my fault. So, Mr. Donahue, Mrs. Donahue, you all submitted an exhibit to this court that lays out the course. I want to put that up on the plasma screen and you take me through it as to exactly how this happened. Can we do that? Absolutely, Your Honor. All right, if you'll cross over, sir. Sure. That's me here with, with, with my putter. Uh, my daughter was standing up observing me putt because we were working on her short game. Now I'm, I'm lining up my putt, so I'm looking down when uh, all of a sudden I hear my daughter yell uh, and I look up and I don't see my daughter, but I see Mr. Ward going screaming by on, a, on, on the golf cart. I run over and I see my daughter, she's in the sand trap, holding her knee, riling in pain, and then Mr. Ward is just nowhere to be seen. Thank you, sir. You may return to the podium. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Ward, in legal cases, people always say there are two sides to every story. So what is your side? Well, my side is that uh, I think it comes down to golf etiquette. 
Now, there's rules on every golf course, you know, that are posted, and then there's some rules that are just common sense. Okay. I've got a list of the rules right here I'd like to present to the court if I could. Okay, Sheriff, but the, you get that list? They broke uh, every rule. They were too loud. Every time one of them made a good shot, I heard giggling, and I think that was Mr. What's Donnie. Not, no. but wait a minute. My daughter was excited. Hold on. If giggling is against the rules, I don't think I want to go to that court. Well, it's exactly. a private club. Yeah. It's, it's, especially, especially if you're out there with your dad. I mean, well, aren't you I, I understand to have fun? that, but I mean, they went beyond. I mean, giggling, yelling. I, I only I, when I got excited. Yes, I giggled because I finally got the the movement of it right. But I wasn't overly loud or talking loud or being distracting. Well, in let's any look way. at these rules. It says club rules. The first is play at a reasonable pace. That was one that they never got. How did right. they break that rule? They were playing at a turtle's pace. I mean, there was a line of golfers behind me. Even so they had it backed up. Yeah. If she's a beginner, though, isn't that kind of expected? I mean, I it it looked like a, a highway when I was playing. Yeah, well, with the but people I mean, behind that, me. that's why you don't you know teach the major portion of it on the course. You you do it at the driving well, range. They were the, the only ones green. behind it. There was nobody else behind us because no. see, they were the only ones behind us. No, there okay. was a bunch of people. I don't know how you we'll get figure that out. So the second one is repair ball marks and replace divots. So they were tearing this golf course up. Exactly. Most of those divots are not mine. She covered I told her about the divots and I put it back. Your yeah. Honor, this is the first time I've ever seen somebody make a divot with a putter. No, that's... Yeah, they made two of them. <laughs> Coming up... So you had a golf bag... Yeah, right about here. Here. There you go. There's water, as you see, on this side. There's a sand trap on this side. And you're right. not going in the water. And there was room there for a cart to go around. All that's... she had to do was step out of the way, which I thought she did. This court has consulted a 23-year veteran of the PGA Tour and the 2009 winner of the British Open, Stuart Sink. We've been talking about something called golf course etiquette. What is that? Mr. Ward comes over the hill with his weighted down golf cart, smacks me in my left leg and breaks my kneecap, and it tosses me into the sand pit where I tear my ACL and slip three discs. Bottom line is it wasn't my fault. Now there's rules on every golf course. I've got a list of the rules right here. So it goes on to say, do not distract other players. See? Place bags and carts between green and next tee. And that, Did they do that? No, and that was the main problem. They had clubs, uh, their bags, I think some food. No, uh, no, food no, or bags, no, no there was not. Can I go up to the monitor here? Please, because I want to... I want to make sure I know where these bags and things are. The golf bag was right here. I mean, it was it was almost like a roadblock there. So, so and you had a golf bag right about here. Here, there you go. Okay, so you got a golf bag there, and they had other stuff that kind of was around. Exactly, yeah. And and you're trying to get over here. Right. There's water, as you see, on this side. There's a sand trap on this side. So, so you really have to go either this way, or that way. That's and right. you're not going in the water. I wasn't going in the water. So I, I go this way, and there was room there for a cart to go around. All that, she had to do was step out of the way, which I thought she did. So you may return to the podium. When you come over the hill, are you screaming anything? Are you saying anything? You know, they knew I was coming around that way. I mean, I didn't think I had to scream or, or anything like that. And when she fell in, I thought that she had just slipped and fallen in, so I didn't say much. And I'm like, hey, you're going to need a wedge to get out of there. Uh, which sounds bad now, but I didn't know she... Yeah, that was kind of, did you not know you kind of ill-timed humor, I mean, wasn't it? She got hurt. I, I didn't know. I was golfing with my buddy Joey. He says, hey, we better hey, stop. He was I think obnoxious big, the whole time, Your Honor. Ignoring. He was screaming at us. Now, Mr. Ward, I, I don't think I can completely let you off the hook because I drive a golf cart when I go fishing uh, at a lake, right? I'm riding around. It seems when you take your foot off the gas, that thing almost stops, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. well, this, well yeah. if you look... This was a hilly, a hilly golf course, and that, this is the 11th hole right there. I was coming down, I had momentum. I'm a big guy, the guys I were with were big guys, so, you know, it wasn't gonna stop easy. You had breaks, you could have stopped, you could have said something, you said asked something. me to move. Excuse you us. Told Talk me to, to move, move. move your bag. There. You could have told me to Talk move to it. Talk to me, folks. Yeah, they knew I was coming through, Your Honor. I mean, they, they're the ones that told me to do it. Next. When Mr. Ward hit me, um, he shattered my kneecap, tore my ACL, and I slipped three discs in my back. 
The vertebrae slips out of place and it crushes my nerves and causes extensive, extensive pain. This wouldn't have happened if they'd followed golf etiquette. To further understand golf etiquette, this court has consulted a 23-year veteran of the PGA Tour, Stuart Sink. Part of me agrees with what Mr. Ward is saying, respect your fellow players, and that means keep up and keep your stuff kind of in a neat little place. My daughter was standing up observing me. I hear my daughter yell and the golf cart barreling down the, the path here. I, I run over and I see my daughter, she's in the sand trap, holding her knee, riling in pain. Ms. Donahue, you have submitted $25,000 in past medical bills for your injuries. I wanna understand your injuries. Will you explain that to me? Yes, Your Honor. Um, when Mr. Ward hit me, um, he initially hit me on my left leg, which shattered my kneecap. And then when I fell, yeah, when I fell into the sand trap, as I fell, I twisted and it tore my ACL. And as you can see, I had to get extensive surgery. And then when I fell into the sand trap, I slipped three discs in my back. You submitted this MRI of your back? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, that is from a pre-existing condition. Sometimes the vertebrae slips out of place and it crushes my nerves, but I didn't have any trouble beforehand. I was standing up perfectly fine. I was dancing, I was hiking, but once the accident happened, it triggered it and I cannot. It aggravated your pre-existing condition of spondylolisthesis. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and you're kind of haunted by this every waking moment. Yes, Your Honor. Is that even a thing? <laughs> really? Is what a thing, her pre-existing. Uh, it's a medical condition that you affected when you hit her with your golf cart. <sighs> One thing that we don't do in this courtroom is to belittle someone else's reality. Thank you, Your Honor. You may not agree with it, but in my courtroom, you can't disrespect it. So you're asking this court for $500,000 for pain and suffering. That's a lot of money. That's not just a blown out knee. I used to dance and I used to go hiking and I used to be able to like go to my job and I can't do that. I can't even live in my own apartment that I had because I can't even go up the stairs. I have to live at home. She had to move back in with, uh, with my wife and I, Your, Your Honor. Oh, she had to move back home to move because back of home, it. Yes, because of, uh, because of this uh, injury that, that Mr. <laughs> Ward caused. And it's just frustrating to see my young, vibrant daughter all of a sudden, you know, uh, have this pain and this uh, inability to, to move and, and work on her own, live on her own. It's, it's very frustrating, as, as you must know. The worst injury to any parent is an injury to our children. Exactly. There's no doubt about that. Mr. Ward, you see that this has changed this young lady's life. Yeah, I do, and I do see it, and I, I feel bad about that. But I also hear her say it's a uh, pre-existing condition. But it wasn't bothering me before. You hit somebody on the golf course. I, I need oh, to see you with a little bit of heart. Well, I, I've got an adult daughter, too, and I well, know. you're a dad, too. Yeah, and uh, this wouldn't have happened if they'd followed golf etiquette. Oh, well. To further understand golf etiquette and how it applies to this case, this court has consulted a 23-year veteran of the PGA Tour and the 2009 winner of the British Open, Stuart Sink. <laughs> Sheriff Matt, will you get Mr. Sink? Right. Yes, Your Honor. Good day, Mr. Sink. Good day, Your Honor. It is a privilege to have you here today. We've been talking about something called golf course etiquette. What is that? Golf is founded on respect your fellow competitor and respect the course and respect the rules of the game. The group behind you, just keep up. Yeah. And um, you try to leave the course how you found it and it's, uh, it's just a respect thing. In this case, Mr. Ward's in the golf cart and he's coming down the path. Yes. What is he supposed to be thinking and looking out for as he's driving the golf cart? Well, I think the number one thing you would probably want him to be aware of is what is in your immediate path. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, that's it's common it was, sense. It was their stuff. Their stuff was in my immediate no, path. No, they weren't. Okay, well, well, let's take that. Now, there's a golf bag full of clubs, partly in the path, and other stuff strewn around. What's he supposed to do as the driver of the golf cart? If you're going so fast that you can't see that there's something in the way, you can't slow down, then you, you probably shouldn't be going that fast. Well, Thank tell me. Exactly. Yeah. If you're an experienced golfer, 
and you've got people ahead of you that are tearing up the course, they're taking too much time, they got their stuff everywhere. They're loud. What are you supposed to do? That can be very frustrating, and I've been there too. Part of me agrees with what Mr. Ward is saying, but there's a way to address it. You know, it, it is part of the game that you're supposed to respect your fellow players, and that means keep up and keep your stuff kind of in a neat little place. And it's, uh, so I, I, I can see both sides here. Mr. Singh, thank you so much. You've really helped me in this case. Folks, I think I've heard what I need to hear, and I'm ready to render my decision. The verdict is in. You and your dad went out to have a great father-daughter day on the golf course. All of a sudden, Mr. Ward comes out of nowhere. You turn around, no time to get out the way. He strikes you and knocks you into the sand trap and changes your life forever. Mr. Ward, you've put up evidence that these folks simply did not honor the etiquette and the rules of the golf course. And so, Miss Donahue is responsible for her own injuries, according to you. When Mr. Ward hit me, um, he initially hit me on my left leg, which shattered my kneecap. And then when I fell, yeah, when I fell into the sand trap, as I fell, I twisted and it tore my ACL. And this wouldn't have happened if they'd followed golf etiquette. Bottom line is it wasn't my fault. In every personal injury case, the plaintiff has the burden to prove three things. You, Miss Donahue, have to prove that Mr. Ward was wrong. That's the first thing. The second thing is you have to prove Mr. Ward's wrong caused your injuries. You have to offer no further proof of your injuries. They are undisputed. You and your dad went out to have a great father-daughter day on the golf course. You all expected to go at a pretty leisurely pace. You're having fun, you're at the 11th hole, all of a sudden Mr. Ward comes out of nowhere, you turn around, no time to get out the way, he strikes you and knocks you into the sand trap and changes your life for a long time, maybe forever. And you want him to be held responsible today. Mr. Ward, you've put up evidence that these folks simply did not honor the etiquette and the rules of the golf course. One, they were going too slow, they were being obnoxious, they put their stuff all over the course, and they did not get out of the way when they had a chance to. And so, Miss Donahue is responsible for her own injuries, according to you. This case and these facts raise two principles of law. The first principle is voluntary undertaking. Under the law, if you undertake a task, the law says you shall do so non-negligently. That is, you shall act reasonably when you do the task that you have undertaken. Here, you have undertaken the task of driving around the debris and the golf bag and other things that were in the cart path. The second legal principle is the duty to keep a proper lookout. It not only applies to motor vehicles, but it applies to golf carts. If you're driving a golf cart, you have a duty to keep a lookout for hazard ahead and dangers to other people. Here, I find that you have proven that Mr. Ward not only did not take the task and do it non-negligently, and that's why he made contact with you, he also failed to keep a proper lookout, otherwise he would have stopped. And because you have proven that he's wrong and that his wrong caused your harm, I find in your favor and I'm going to award you $25,000 for your past medicals, $30,000 for your future medicals, $500,000 for pain and suffering for a total award of $555,000. That is my final verdict and this matter is adjourned.